this one to life. A map in the pocket for Vitality. But Cloud9's big gamble of Anubis, a map that they are undefeated on in the major circuit, from the RMR to the major itself. They've got faith in their pool, but do they have faith in themselves? Because they're going to need it here. That's a huge question. Vitality's in no sleeper either, right? Seven and one in the past six months on this map, but their only loss to this exact roster. Vitality look for vengeance in this map, and in this match, Mirage is uncertain. And they don't want to go there. Can Vitality make it clean and clinical on this stage? Cloud9 with a brick wall on Inferno. They got brittle, they got broken apart after that eco round win. And now Vitality look to go all the way around the world, back to this A site. Got a double setup here, electronic baiting with a smoke out. And Axel, a commendable performance in the first map, keeping up his elimination stage run, but with the entirety of vitality coming his way. Gonna have to work it out for them. Electronic underhands that smoke in, just dropping it close, and even goes on to open. Cloud9, they will lose the point, man. Electronic is spammed out, and vitality now move Apex. back. They're gonna join up with Apex. Apex has played Cloud9 like a fiddle here. The, the rotate comes out and he finds the perfect gap. Apex threads the needle, allowing that bomb plant to come in. And so now the retake afoot for Cloud9. A little ways out is Axile, so they've got to wait. They've got to be patient. Wait till everyone is ready to strike. Apex spotted. It's Saibu to take the next contact. Kills going back and forth, but Vitality will edge it out. And Flames is the man to step up and start this one strong. That is every pistol round in this series going the way of Vitality. Oh, that, those footsteps and rotations being run are music to Apex's ears. He plays them for a fall. And Cloud9, you can feel the pressure falling on their heads right now. The fact that they full rotate off of the B site when they even have a smoke in the way at A, that is desperation for Cloud9. A disastrous call to make. And no doubt that Apex is outcalled Boomage in this matchup already, despite a strong T-side start on Inferno. Vitality one up them in that uh, uh, offensive half. And a pistol round deploys Vitality for a strong start on Anubis as well. Because remember, when we saw this team take on and lose the Cloud9 and the RMR, it was not close. 13-5, it was a stop for Cloud9. But it was also a map Vitality knew was coming in today, one way or another, two or three, that was the question. So I'm, you know Vitality are ready. I'm glad you talk about this head-to-head -head of Apex v Boomage because, you know, one of the things that I think has been so cool is watching this evolution of Apex as a player from ending his source career on that very game squad all the way through into CSGO where he had to live through the French Shuffle, he had to rebuild himself, moving off of the entry role into that IGLing territory, a task that he said he always wanted to do but didn't feel comfortable doing, not until he had to when Alex stepped out of this roster. And so over time you've witnessed him constantly evolve, another challenge emerges when Vitality make the call to go international. And so he's dropped into a whole new environment, has to step up again, but this guy has always been able to adapt, he's always been able to overcome. And so if he has gone away and he did do the prep after they got beaten down by Cloud9 on this map last time, anticipating that it was going to crop up at some point in this series, you know that Apex is going to come into this with ideas. Yeah, he certainly had pieces around him, fantastic pieces around him, but yeah, some punches being thrown the way of Apex. I mean, even losing Zonic for this Vitality organization was a big question mark, with x having to come in, some of the largest shoes to fill in Counter-Strike against the best GOAT, the, the GOAT of coaching. And on top of that, Saiwu so even being sick in that elimination stage. You, you, you know, that's a rarity, his own farms groups. But at least he's showing up here for the stage. That T side was a great sign from Saiwu. Some would say that's where he does his best work. And so seeing, you know, Saiwu in this position now where the kind of ex excuses are not, that there's no, no one's like floating around. You, you want him to show that he can do it versus 
way, the top 20 squad up here on the stage at a major. I mean, this is just the beginning, right? Of course, you have questions about that second quarter final, the phase, spirit, conundrum, the possibility. Maybe some would say probability that we have Zai Wu Dong a matchup we've yet to have. But you've got to get there first. And Cloud9 don't look too disturbed just yet. Talk about star players turning in game leaders, electronic on your screens. He had to go through the same thing in Cloud9. It was quite the opposite to Apex, I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, the difference there was right where Apex was able to kind of overcome that emotional barrier and keep going with the leadership role. Electronic wasn't. Hey, he even said it himself. He gets too emotional, he gets too invested. He shuts down at times. And so it always felt inevitable that Cloud9 would have to fix the roles in this team. It's always been the biggest talking point. Lack of orb. Lack of in-game leader. Lack of identity. But not lack of firepower. No, it's certainly not with uh, Axile's form looking to have a serious uptick. I mean, I know they fall down in that first map, but some of the kills he was getting, some of the flicks yeah. that were coming through, you could just, you know, for a moment, it was like you were watching Axile at its very best. And that's something that's been out of reach for the longest time now. He was a one half hero though, Harry. Need that consistency across the board, and that has been the biggest problem for Cloud9, while we call it the rotating door of rifles. Anyone can step up on the stage and match. There's no guarantees, and without that, quarters may have been as far as you go. How can you establish an era or a dynasty or take trophies with such unreliable results? Cloud9 are getting put to the test in this opening round. Someone that it's well worth talking about, Sphinx on our screens, just kind of taking a moment to take it all in, looking out into the crowd. The last, you know, two, two majors or three majors go rather, Sphinx quarterfinal against this very core of Cloud9. He was in Ents, they were in Na'Vi. Back at Antwerp, well, we know how that went. Na'Vi all the way to those finals. Yeah. Right now he's looking for revenge. And Spinks, before he headed into that semi-final, he even said he, he wanted to play versus that Na'Vi squad. He wanted to beat them. He wanted a chance to play up against the very best. And in that series, even though they got banged out, Spinks was the guy trying to keep uh, his squad in it. And even when he left that ends team where he kind of kick-started his whole career and moved to this Vitality squad, he admitted that was a very tough decision. But at the end of the day, he wanted to lift trophies. And so that was his reason for joining Vitality. That's what this team is supposed to do. And so that little tech pause out of the way. We're ready to get right back into this. Royal Arena, come on, let me hear you! That's more like it, okay. Vitality have won the pistol. They've often been good at converting them. I don't need to tell you that. And Cloud9 aren't bringing any resistance to the party this time. They want to get those rifles out straight away. There should be very little room for this one to get weird. C CT side Anubis, an extremely uncomfortable position to be, an unenviable position to be for Cloud9. So already as Vitality continue their hot streak of converting pistols, I'm assured in this round, Cloud9 once again start from the back foot. Defense doing them no favors in this series. Yeah, this is a lock-in round at Cloud9, I know it. There, there was no illusion in their minds. They're very much playing for when those rifles come out. And you mentioned it, they've been playing on the back foot all series long with no pistol rounds found so far. They've always had to try and battle back into this from behind. Okay, over commitment, but it shouldn't be an issue. That gun gets grabbed. And crisis averted for Vitality. It's almost as clean as it could be.
Last time these teams matched up on this map, Cloud9 dominated them, and so they want to get back to those winning ways as fast as they can. They need to. They need something to look forward to in this series, and this was supposed to be it. It was a Hail Mary of a pick. A lot of people anticipated that Overpass would be the map we see come through for this Cloud9 squad. And that was off the back, you know, that previous game off of an eight-round CT side. So this is where Cloud9 should be comfortable. That's against the rule. That's the exception. So what did Vitality learn from that loss? Aggressive start for Hobbit, attempting to swing through that dark smoke. He won't meet Vitality there. And even as he exits, his path brought with danger. Grenades going through in that mid pop as well. Flames finds Electronic getting aggressive. There's another one coming Ooh. through. And Axar's here for his head. Takes a second kill. So much damage done down to these players outside of A. Both Messi and Zaiwu are low. Vitality are going to look to punish this. Or get punished rather, but they end up leaving. They end up getting out of there. And so for now, they'll maintain this four on four, but they are wounded. They are hurting. As the gamble going for Cloud9, that's the question on the tip of Apex's tongue. Can you find the answer of the block? Attempted an opener for Spinks, nothing is found. Nothing is guaranteed. Oh. And nothing in this A site but Boomage. Something's called him back. Drops back into the site. Smoke off over in main. Vitality were grouping for the A hit. Boomage is all that stands here for Cloud9. Two low players on the other side of this smoke in Zaiwu and Mezzi. And Boomage with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Is that too much to bear? Smoke blowing open. Boomich can't get back. And so the captains clash and Apex comes out smiling. That was a huge opportunity for Boomich, right? Two players in his crosshair. The low player first, even on that smoke break, but perfect utility on the execute for Vitality. They answer the call and keep theirs as well. 3-0 off of this T side. The pressure of this stage is a very different beast to the comfort of a land hall for Cloud9. It has been some time. It's the thing though, you know, you talk about pressure, this is where you, you have to rise to the occasion, you have to step up. Someone like Flames on the other side, right? He's adjusting fantastically to this. Yeah. Only 20 years old, youngest player on Vitality, and he's had standout performances on both maps. Even in this one, he's the guy who starts it off over here in middle. I mean, you have a lot to compete with when you talk about young players in this Vitality team, right? Look at Zaiwu's uh, breakout year. That's straight to number one. The youngest player to ever do that. Followed it up the next year as well. Of course, a couple more in there a couple years later. And I mean, even now, we've never had a teenager be number one in their debut year. Oh, Axel. Well, it's a nice play, but they just crossed past it. These new smokes are beautiful to look at. But they're not doing Cloud9 any favors. They've got to pop through on A main. Boomage with a block. Nothing but this smoke. Cloud9 often find a lot of success in challenging for these fights. On players crossing over towards A, able to lock out rounds a lot of the time in this portion of the map. And right now, Vitality have dodged that threat time and time again. So clearly, work has gone in. They were ready for this today. The A defense is just Boomich on a USP, and even as Electronic moves in to join him, great, now there's a P250 here as well. That's hardly a winning recipe. And Vitality, full on slaughter util. Ooh. Full focus as they come through. One out of Boomich on the USP, but he's got to do more, and he can't. Mezzi secures both the openers. And Vitality are home free in this round. Maybe if Spinks gives this one up, but he's not being overzealous. Instead, he's just holding for this swing back in. And now he's got Mezzi alongside him. Signed and sealed here for Vitality to send a message to Cloud9. We will abuse this A bomb site. 
a bit of doubt with that pistol round thrown in, that late lurk through Dark. Cloud9 can't always be confident that that's necessarily where Vitality are going, even if they find that opening kill. A couple of rounds of, hit, uh, of clean executes for Vitality has set a precedent to start this map. 4-0, Cloud9 need to come back. And Apex is acutely aware of how he's making Cloud9 feel. It felt like back at Inferno, Cloud9's whole game plan was to try and bully Apex over towards B, deny that banana control, get rid of that early. And we saw the effect that that had. Vitality started leaning more players over towards that side of the map. And then that would open up other avenues later on in the game. Vitality are now seeking to do the same thing. They want Cloud9 paranoid. They want that A site scared. They want extra numbers pulled over towards A because we already saw in the pistol. They've got that ability to change direction on the fly. Which is all comes out early. It's a great map for it. Lots of opening positions to be played. Lots of moves to be made. So I will hold on to Dark, but they get an HE right on his head. Boomage is not looking to tackle with the best. Sphinx holding strong outside of B. Again, Vitality play towards the water. They're giving time and space for not only Zywu to find a kill, but for Flames to keep the pressure on middle. All over the map, Cloud9 losing information, losing real estate. They've got to take something. It's got to be B. To do that, they've got to get through Sphinx, which is easier said than done. First kill found. They're going to try and flash him off the angle, but Sphinx a little faster, a little smarter, was ready for that play. And so Perfecto is never given the chance to trade, but he wants it, he needs it. That voice in his head is calling him back for it, but he'll back up. Can see that opening kill. Boomich wow. besting Zai Wu, but Perfecto is caught in the crossfire. Boomich has got to do this all alone now. This orc on his back is the only thing that stands between that and the vitality round being won. Boomich, all these shots missing, nails the first, but can't take it any further. Zai Wu is just so damn fast. Even as Perfecto's on that wider angle, he somehow removes him from the round before Boomich gets the trade off. And that is a worthy one for one for Vitality. Cracking open an undefended B bomb site. Where even Boomich's antics on the AWP are not enough, not a surprise. As this has been the biggest question point for Cloud9. High highs, low lows, no AWP, the most pivotal role in Counter-Strike. And Cloud9 have been unable to feel those huge boots left by Shiro. Will be on this very stage later today. Vitality proving that that Cloud9 eight round CT side might just be an, ano an anomaly in this stage matchup. Right now, it's not like Cloud9 have anything to go off of. It's not like anyone's been given that heroic performance thus far. You know, Axar was inspiring a lot of faith, a lot of confidence back on Inferno. But here, it, it is a slow start across the board. Yeah. And what a sad way for the Cloud9 to you know, fall apart if that's what we're going to get in the second map as well because their major run has been absolutely phenomenal. Near flawless from the RMR, a 3-0, a win over Vitality, straight into the major, taking down big dogs, taking down Na'Vi, G2. Their only loss in this whole circuit is to Spirit. And we'll give them that. Vitality, sure, they've been fairly clean, but they've not nearly faced the same level of opposition that Cloud9 have had to contend with wins over Imperial, the Mongols. And sure, Complexity made them work for it. And that warm-up came at the right time. Vitality red hot in the Royal Arena. Is there any stopping them? Is there any slowing down this T side? Cloud9 have not had solutions yet. Vitality have been full of those. Boomich here finds its way over towards B once again. Vitality once more set their eyes on this A site.
again, painstakingly slow on these T sides for Vitality, getting all their ducks in a row. And knocking down Axile, he's trapped out. That volley forces a fight, he'll only take one. Does well to get out of it with a one for one there. The util would have wrecked him, so he had to take that swing. Vitality aren't feeling pressure to commit. They've still got plenty of time left to play with. They like toying with Cloud9. They like getting in their heads. They want them doubting every move. And so as Cloud9 have adjusted heavy over towards middle, over towards A, Hobbit is left as the sole B site defender. Sphinx has been waiting back at B long since the start of the round. Hobbit pushes into dark. It's just the one for one as Zywoo's off, fires off in reply. Some of the most phenomenal trading for Vitality in this map so far. No kill, goes unpunished, no play. Comes out for free. And now a free B bomb site it's in, in its entirety. A smoke to stop Perfecto from getting involved. That bomb doesn't have to cross. Zywoo can take this fight if he wants, but it would be risky. Oh, he can wallbang. The shots come oh! denied by Boomich. 10 seconds. Someone's got to save him. Perfecto can filter through. Boomich takes two, and Cloud9 are on the board. And it's Boomich's AWP that gets them there. About time. Just Take, that, taking that out the most decorated AWP that we have in these uh, in these major playoffs. And he's the guy where the AWP's just the decoration. But look at this, he spots the arm, he takes the leg two times over. Can't be one and done. It's got to be the start of something here on a very difficult half. I mean, in that game, we touched upon it earlier on when these teams have matched up on this map last time. Boomich did actually outshine on that AWP, which is a wild thing to even take into consideration. But a little 2K like that, it's put some wind in his sails. He starts this round off aggressive over towards A main. It's a very different day. It's very different stakes. Staying ahead of the curve. Boomich is on a new line. Of course, that's a round of Vitality. Leave this position open completely. Nice nay to put pressure on door. Allows Vitality to walk all the way through middle. They can play the fade of this smoke. They use it to spot Apex with little tricks on this mid take. Start pressuring. They're oh, going through that yeah. smoke. Axile is run down. Boomich again has got to deliver on this AWP and it just sails past Flames who seems determined, who seems so active on this T side. Flames top in the charts right now. And he was like the, the one man you could have looked to have questioned for this Vitality squad. The one man you could have made a case for, for struggling under the bright lights. But not in this game. Flames is here to stay, that much is apparent. And he's the reason they got here so clean as well. That game over Complexity was an absolute struggle for Vitality. He had to drag them out. It was on this map. He came through with a massive second pistol round with a 3K that propelled them into a comeback. It put them 3-1. They needed the help, they needed extra hands. Zywoo's were not working. And right now we're seeing that statement from Boomich after the 3 0 opening stage come true. I am not a stable author, he claims. Continuing to show us one glimmer of hope, one nice round in the mix, but with the exception of that, it's been all misses. And they're so determined to keep it in play, they keep going back to it. Boomich donning that AWP again, and it will be a focal point for this CT side. It will be something you have to keep an eye on here, you have to acknowledge. No one else showing up around him. He sits top of the board for Cloud9 in spite of the missteps. And so this AWP has something to answer for, but where is everyone else for Cloud9? Vitality have not lost this trade in dark one round. Ollie forces a decision. Hobbit must escape. Vitality get this one for free, finally. There is blocking Util on this B bomb site, but it has to hurry up quick. It has to come through as Perfecto drops his final nade. Vitality emerge into the site. Zywoo can't find that entry kill. Hobbit holds for one, but again, not enough. 
Feels like it won't be the last time we say that for Cloud9. They crumble. A brittle B site. Electronics trying to make a move here. Trying to rejuvenate the squad as he plays through this smoke, but tagged up on the push. Axile instead tries to take up the mantle of the man to pull this back, but set up from the flashbang. Apex puts Flames in a spot to succeed, and he continues to exert that dominance over this T side. Flames is absolutely on fire. That position gained up on the lip so he can wait for the flash. He was in no hurry. He just wants to end this round and take everything away. He saw the AWP. He knows Boomich is here and they want that gone. This AWP is the only threatening thing coming out next round and it will get removed. Vitality aren't just confident anymore. They do not respect Cloud9. They want this win to be a brutal and swift vengeance. <laughs> timeout for Cloud9, but I don't think that this will be enough to save them here. This is fantastic for, for Vitality, there is no doubt about it. They had a pretty harrowing start to the year. It's always, or at least usually downhill after winning the major, it's so hard to keep it up. Especially when roster changes on the horizon. Go coach, gone. with more green but it's still vitality succeeding on major stages exactly what this team was made to do exactly what you what you'd expect from the caliber of players this roster fields and the captain is keeping them in it anything but calm ferocious t half of anubis right now another awp another heavy investment Will these purchases ever pay off? Even if that orb starts firing on all cylinders, even if somehow Boomich rises to the occasion, he's not the big issue in this one. There's no supporting cast around him. And so sure, they're putting a lot of money in to keep bringing it out. You've got to have some faith in this oh, orb on Boomich right now. Flames, full faith in this guy, 12 and two. Topping the charts for Vitality and carving a path to the semi-finals. It's all flames. Eight and one, another save for Cloud9. This is getting dismal. This is getting brutal. This is exactly how Vitality, if you ask them, this is exactly how they would envision a grudge match between these teams going down. This is how you want to propel yourself into those semis. You need the confidence up. You want flames. Believing in this squad and bringing his best. Oh, he is not stopping right now. Absolutely brutal. Got to save this sword with something, but is it nothing for Cloud9? Four major winners on this squad. They are crumbling under the bright lights. And it's recency bias. It's the next generation. It's the young stars shining for vitality flames doesn't have this stage experience it is not deterring him absolutely dominating the server and no successor for cloud nine and this has even been the story throughout the rest of the major so far for vitality it's been spearheaded by sphinx and by flames and flames is showing oh, his oh. best look yet here in the quarterfinals He has become what Cloud9 feared. Flames is rocking their world. Setting fire to the rain that falls on Cloud9's parade. Boomich is holding on tightly to this AWP. He's clutching his mouse right now like never before. Hoping that he can do something. Oh. He can deliver anything to Cloud9. But they don't make life easy for Orpers. They don't make life easy for Boomich. A fast reposition out of dark. Gets posted on main. Vitality are going to come walking into this AWP. Perfecto dead as he tries to make a play. And now it is just Boomich left in the clutch. Trying to get ahead of them. He's trying to read one step further than Vitality. But they don't fear. They don't cower in front of the Boomich orb. They're going back into the bomb site as Boomich goes around the world. 
hoping, praying, the vitality overdo this, but they don't. Determined walk into this B bomb site. And a prawn that puts them well and truly in a winning position. Nine and one. Maybe guaranteed. Can Bubic even justify this rotation? And this is just a brutal way to lose a round. For Bumic, you know, he was trying to build into this one. He gets that first kill, was in the right place, and he tries to get ahead of it. That's the leader in him, trying to outread the opposition. But it leaves him far and away from winning this clutch. And so it will never even get attempted. Now, not only are they getting outperformed, they're getting outcalled, they're getting outmaneuvered, they're getting outread. Vitality coming through with their A game. Yeah, I gotta say, you know, even though Flames is, is red hot right now, he's 15 and two, he's looking indomitable. The calling has been fantastic for Vitality. No kill has gone untraded with the exception of Zyru walking through that smoke. Vitality have been so cautious, they've been so together. Axel has been offered nothing more than a one for one on A main and he was the star of the show back on Inferno. He was a guy getting the rounds going for Cloud9. He has just been absolutely iced out in this map as an A anchor. A very difficult position on a good day. Vitality make it look like hell on earth. And so Apex's leadership once again, putting Vitality at the forefront of a major run. Simply four rounds from semis and a quick day in the office. You can't even imagine what this must feel like for Flames. This is one of these like career highlight moments. This is one of these career defining matches. Yeah, look at Spinks, he's one and four. He's not a factor, we haven't yeah. said Zaiwu's name. None of this matters. And you know, when you're on a team with someone who had to rise as fast and as hard as Zaiwu, oh! and everyone's talking about you, that speaks volumes. Zaiwu decides he wants to be bought into that conversation. Gets involved here and now. Speak at the devil and he shall appear. It's Zai Wu's double kill that tees up Vitality for double digits. They're making it look, look like Inferno. One, two kills, you just win the round. Cloud9 are trying to get aggressive to regain space, but Vitality are still waiting on their default. This will give them something. This will give them more kills. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. But Flames a missed shot, and Electronic keeps Cloud9 in consideration. Awkward thing here, this is actually one of the better spots you've been in to attempt to retake, and even then, Spinks roars to life, haven't even had to mention him throughout this game so far. But he gets his, and Vitality looking to get theirs, is now Cloud9, two versus four, and it might be another dismal save. With each one of these, they have to sit there, let the round wash over them, let the game wash over them. They can't come to terms with their failures here. But they have been let down in this second map. It felt wild. The Anubis pick comes through. That's Cloud9 believing in their pool, believing in their game. They've had good results on this one, but Vitality have come through ready. They have come through prepared. Yeah, you almost wonder if Cloud9 got into their own head right with that veto, knowing that this map would be allowed as a third. Sure, Mirage was never going to be comfortable for Vitality, but Cloud9 make a case for the best CT site in the world on Overpass. And I bet they are wishing they had the chance to show that today. Obliterated on Anubis. Cloud Nine come crashing down. If this keeps up, right at the dawn of CS2, you might have the most dominant loss in a major playoff game, right? Just uh, looking to come down the pipeline as a CS2 record set early, pending any 13 0s in the remainder of the tournament. It's a pretty, pretty rough one to have to try and beat. Cloud9, uh, Cloud9 keep their head in it right now. Relentless orb investments. Sure, it paid off for their one round. But is that reproducible? Or is it just a flash in the pan? A domineering vitality. Looking to again, again walk it over the line. Got a double setup here. 
two of the most terrifying stars of Cloud9, but snuffed out, eclipsed in this map. Axon and Electronic on a final stand. And that's actually how much Electronic is shaking right now. Look at him go. Up close towards me, and Axar holds this tight line, looking for anything, but he's out of it. Check oh, out! Oh, oh, oh. Just might bring them back in right when you thought it was over. Shooting for the stars at two on the half. And what a time for him to have stepped up here. This was about to be a wash, no contest. Still very much could be, but Cloud9 looking for anything, clutching at straws, clutching at Electronic. Saiwu forced out by the Molotov into that AWP. And now it's just Sphinx. Stone Cold on the first half, never had to do anything, was never required. Left in a rough 1v4, an electronic. Rising to the occasion with four kills. Last of the half is put up by Cloud9. Absolutely nothing to celebrate, not even a smile on the face at this point, because Cloud9 have still lost every single pistol in this series. The conversions, for the most part, clean on Vitality. They've got to break the streak at the hardest point in the match, at their last dawn on this playoff run. It never even begun. And even the difference in just the body language that we're seeing as we get ready to head into the second half. Cloud9 pull off a round like that. Usually those are the ones you're celebrating over, but there's nothing to celebrate when you get two rounds on your CT side. Not when it was the CT side that carried you to that dominant win over this squad last time you matched up. Vitality, they just refocus. They want this one over and done with now, and nothing in this series is there to suggest that Cloud9 have got what it takes to win a pistol round. If they lose this pistol, then it is not to, not left to the imagination, not left to wonder as to why they lost this series. They would not have picked up a single pistol on both maps. Vitality, it's the expectation. It's what we're used to. And they're looking to make moves in the mid round to complicate matters, pushing out through B main. Boomich and Perfecto are here. They spot that push at least. Electronic picks up a kill over in middle. Starting to pick up form at the end of regulation. Hobbit with that reply at least gets the trade onto Flames. A huge kill to find with the form that Flames is showing here. So now Sphinx is left as the sole defender of this B site. This is a nice move. It's going to give Vitality a bit of info. It will let Mezzi gamble, but it's still up to Sphinx. Silent in that first half, alone at the back of the site. The backstab a second too late. Sphinx is covered by smokes, but he's got an open sight line here. They stop that ball oh. while Mezzi taps out two. Sphinx is here to help, and it's domination from Vitality. Not just in this map, not just in this series, but in the pistols as well. What a turnaround. You thought for a moment, if you were Cloud9, you had something. You had something going your way, but I, Messi and Sphinx robbed that pistol. I think they even missed the smokes there. That smoke's in the middle of the site. There's one on CT. That feels like it's meant for Temple. Cloud9 crumbling under the weight of major winners. Here they go, a final dish hurrah, a force with no plant, explosion into this site. Messi is caught with a Molotov in hand. He's got a crossing help, but it won't last long. Cloud9 break in, then they break down. Apex is here to hound them. Sets and this them might be as good with. as done. Axar's a long way away. Vitality are going for the throat. They want this to be embarrassing. They want this to be one-sided. They want to go into that semi-finals riding a high, and they just might. One round. And Apex, as the tenured captain, as the veteran, is the one that opens up that retake. There is no doubting Apex, Vitality Apex, are here in Copenhagen, Apex, and they mean business. They brought their cohort. Apex, 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 
almost feels like home advantage, but Paris was last year. And in the present moment, Cloud9 take a breather. They take their final opportunity. A timeout up against elimination point here at the playoffs. Vitality making a statement. Spirit of your favorites, we're here to play as well. Cloud9 certainly can't get in their way. Showing as well that the talent on this roster goes far deeper than just as Zaiwoo. This has been all about Flames. This one's been all about Spinks. Zaiwoo's barely had to lift a finger. His teammates have got this. He believes in them. And so this could be it. This could be Vitality reaching the semi-finals right now in ludicrously dominant fashion. Cloud9, they've looked done since the midpoint of that first half. They have been overpowered, they have been outcalled, they've got nothing to show for this Anubis pick. A map that has been nothing but kind to the Cloud9 squad becomes their greatest enemy in a major quarterfinal. And after such a clean run, such a dominant run from RMR to the playoffs, one lost series in a BO1 to the world favourites. And Cloud9. Nothing short of indefensible in this series. Vitality, again, info play gathering it towards B. It's going to free up rotations. They know Cloud9 are in the middle. They're using Util to block, to buy time. Zaiwu has the fault. He sees them coming. Flames and Zaiwu here to withstand this. They will open up. Zaiwu getting involved. And now it's just flames, toppled and run down. Sphinx on the rotate out through middle. Vitality sit a man up in this retake. They want this one over and done with here and now. And one man stands between them and that semi-final. Today, V is for victory and for vengeance. Vitality come through swinging and they don't miss. They might have fallen to Cloud9 last time around, but they get their revenge here and now.